Well, I guess I'm just happy it's had a reaction. You know, most people write books. Uh, most books just sort of go, you know, straight to um, whatever. You know, the the book the book de depository in the sky. So I'm happy to have a reaction. I'm happy that you know it's uh, it's uh, got a readership. Uh, I'm happy, uh, I might say, that uh, I can still come and go from China. <laughs> that it, it hasn't stopped me uh, uh, from going in and out of China, even though I don't think the book pulls any punches. Uh, and, I'm, and I think, the, but the most satisfying thing is, is I think that it, I think the, you know, whatever faults the book has, and I'm sure there are lots, I think the topic, the choice of topic, and zeroing in on the topic of the Chinese Communist Party uh, has, I think, for a lot of people, been illuminating. And I guess I'm pretty pleased about that. I, I think people, a lot of people who go to China um, uh, for the first time or have gone in recent years or come in and out of China and doing business and the like, and you see uh, what is you know, a remarkable transformation um, in the economy, in the consumer economy, uh, in the private lives of individual Chinese. So, you know, the, the on, on the surface, and not just on the surface in China, there's been tremendous changes symbolized by, you know, people driving BMWs, living in big mansions in the suburbs and the like, and drinking Starbucks. Um, you know, I'm not saying don't be fooled by that. I'm not saying it doesn't mean anything, but it doesn't, you know, mean, as some people seem to think it does, that the entire political system has changed. Uh, I wanted to illustrate in an accessible fashion uh, how the core of the system in China, remarkably for a country with a heavily marketized economy, the country still runs on Soviet hardware. And um, it's still hard to get your head around. It's hard for me to get my head around and explain it. But that's the biggest thing I was trying to illustrate. America has elections. Uh, China has a selection. Um, uh, there were, last time there were nine candidates for the Politburo Standing uh, uh, c Committee for nine positions one candidate for, for secretary, uh, one position. What I'm really in looking forward to for the uh, five-year party congress next year to see whether there's been any change in the how secretive this process is, whether they throw it open in any fashion at all, whether we see any uh, signs of and deliberate uh, signs of internal competition uh, for the positions on the Central Committee, the Politburo, the Standing Committee and the like. Um, so. I, th I think they understand the system is too uh, untransparent, too secretive, but it's hard to open up, you know, because you don't know where, it, where you end up. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how this unfolds. Totally exotic, I, I think. I mean, I spent about 20 years in North Asia, except for two years back in my native Australia. And in Asia, you tend to get used to new news kind of oozes out under the door, and you realize two or three days later, you, know, you see something, you know, oh my God, something's happened, and you put two and two together. In the States, um, it seems that each side has their own enemies in sort of stockades from about 6.30 in the morning and are pelting them with fruit. And the noise level is just deafening. Uh, uh, coming from a country where you're used to sort of, you know, following a wink and a nod and a hint here and a trail there and piecing things together. So for me, coming to grips with the States has been very difficult to uh, reset my antenna to, to sort of, you know, get rid of the noise and try and get a sense of what the big trends are. I mean, I think in China, I always felt that you were often making a difference. You often were able to genuinely disclose uh, information or um, I don't like to use the word educated, but, but people would learn something from what you write. It's much harder in the States uh, because it's such a well-covered story and, um, you know, by a lot of terrific journalists and newspapers, um, plus the noise level and the sort of <clears throat> the way the system has basically become binary uh, is, is, you know, not easy to cover and also not very uh, productive a lot of the time. Well, I watched uh, U.S. and China relations and U.S. domestic politics from afar in Asia many years. And everybody always said there used to be a trail of congressmen and senators who would come through China and they would always tell us, look, I've told the Chinese that this year we really mean it. They better do something about their currency, this, that or the other, because there's going to be an explosion in Washington. And of course, there never really is an explosion. China, as far as I can see, has never become 
what the pollsters call a salient issue. People change their votes on it in, in large numbers. But you know, it keeps moving up the, uh, up the radar screen, if you like. Um, we've got a currency bill before now before the House. Uh, that's going to be interesting to see. Many people expect it to come out of Congress in some form. Mitt Romney, who you think is pretty business friendly, has got a high level of invective about China and the currency. Um, to the point where I think he'll have to do something if he does get in, which is, of course, entirely possible. Um, so the, it re China really, I, f I feel it's, it's becoming a much bigger issue, um, but it's pretty unpredictable to know how it will play out.